Hello, this is the second of a three video series demonstrating the basic functionality of BrainSight. In the first um, video, we went through all the steps that are required to prepare a project file for the TMS session for a particular subject. Um, in that case, we loaded the MRI images, uh, performed some 3D reconstruction, maybe loaded an overlay, um, performed registration to an atlas. We then would have identified our targets for the core registration as well as any targets that we want to actually uh, reach with the TMS file. So before, before we start with the actual session, I'll just describe the hardware a little bit. Um, off the camera here, um, out, of, out of sight of the camera, we have a position sensor system, which is in fact a stereoscopic infrared camera. And what it looks for is it looks for the reflections off of um, these little spheres that we can place onto any tool we like to track. For example, we have a head strap that I place on my head and th these three spheres, uh, this is what we call a tracker. We can place it on my head and that allows the computer then to know the position and orientation of my head during the TMS session. We can also attach a tracker to the TMS coil. Now, the way we attach this is using a coil specific adapter. So this coil tracker itself is the same for every coil that we support. And we have these different types of adapters depending on the coil that you have. So this is in fact a early prototype of the Magston remote coil and we attach this through one of the two holes. We have another plastic adapter that would go into the typical beige Magston coil. For other Magston custom coils or the MagVenture coils, we have different diameter rings that would attach to the handle. And that would allow then a tracker to be attached to the coil that way. Once we attach the coil to the tracker, pardon me, to the coil, we perform a calibration step where using a calibration tool, which is also being tracked by the system, we simply place the coil onto the calibration tool where there's a hotspot indicator here, this little spike, and that is how we tell the system what point of reference we're interested in on the TMS coil itself. So the calibration tool itself is designed to, again, support different coils. They don't have to be flat-faced. Um, in fact, we can adapt that um, calibration tool to virtually any coil or any tool that you wish to try. So to start a TMS session, let me just uh, go back to the BrainSight menu here. And let's close this Untitled project. And if we recall the last session, we created a project called Training. Let me recall that. Now, when the subject arrives, we have this tracker. We place it onto the head. Now, I just want to uh, note this demonstration will be of the very, very basic functionality of the TMS system. The reason being is that all of our equipment is currently returning from New Orleans from the Society for Neuroscience Conference. So I don't have an EMG device uh, today for this demonstration, and I don't have a working TMS device that's also um, returning from the conference. Um, I'll be replacing this video in a week or so with a more complete video that will include a working TMS device and the working EMG. The review part of this uh, video series, the third video, um, I'll be able to use a project file similar to this one that was, that was created in the past when we had the EMG device. So I'll be able to show you the results of the EMG and how we can do some post-processing with it in the next video. Okay, so we've, as, as I mentioned, we've gone through all these steps in the previous session, except for the last step, which is called sessions, and that's to do a TMS session. Now here we have a list of all the TMS sessions we might have performed with this subject with this project file. And of course, being a new file, we haven't performed any sessions yet. So I'm simply going to select new online session. And that brings up a new window called the session window. And again, as with the project window, there are several steps to perform, and we can simply go along these steps um, to perform the TMS session. The first step is called targets. Now, we might have created targets for different experiments for the same subject. So you might have a big bank of targets in this list, and you may not want to use all these targets in this particular session. And in fact, you may not want to see them all. So we can select any target we want and click on add and it adds it to this list. So these are the targets that will be shown for this particular session. I can also simply select it and drag it across. So if you recall from the previous video, target one was a discrete trajectory roughly over my motor cortex. The second one was a grid. And if I click on this disclosure triangle, in fact, we can see all the grid nodes. Right? So each individual spot along the grid is shown as a separate item. Now these are in order in columns and rows but you might want to randomize this grid. So if you're doing a, a motor mapping task and you don't want to be stimulating close to the previous area you just stimulated, if you want to randomize it, 
we can simply select nodes in this list and click randomize selected and now these have been randomized. In fact, if you want to do the grid more than once and you want to really randomize it, I can drag the grid over a second time. Here's the grid again and I can randomize that one. So now that would give me essentially two clicks at every grid point but in a completely randomized way. And all the targets will be presented sequentially in the order that they are in this list. And just to simplify that, I'm going to remove the second one. Now once I've selected my targets, I can click on go to next step. And the next step is positioning the camera system. So <coughs> again, off, off the field of view, we have the position sensor camera. Here's a three-dimensional representation of that. So here's the camera over here. And this green bubble is the area in which the camera can see its field of view, as it were. So in fact, if I move my head around, you can see how my head bobs within the camera's field of view. The camera is on a articulated gooseneck, so we can easily position the camera anywhere in the lab so that it's out of your way, but that it has a good view of the subject tracker, and equally importantly, the TMS coil when we're doing a TMS session. So sometimes you want to take a moment to plan where the subject will be, where the coil will be, to pick the optimal location for the camera. So here's a three-dimensional representation as well as uh, three planar views as well. So the idea is I want to make sure that I'm in the center area of the sweet spot. If I were here, for example, if I'm teeter-tottering, being in and out of the view, it would be a bit annoying to perform an experiment like that because you would always have trouble tracking. Now the next step is called the registration step. So if we think back to the previous video, we created landmarks in the, let's see from here, on the ear, the bridge of the nose, the tip of the nose. Right? So now the system is going to ask us to touch these with the pointer. All right, so this is being tracked, the system knows what the tip is. And I want to just carefully touch these landmarks. I want to be careful to actually be in the same location, so I don't want to be sloppy. This is, in fact, the key to the, the accuracy of the system. If you do these landmarks very well, you can have a very, very high accuracy. If you do these sloppily, well, then you'll have a slightly lower accuracy. So the first landmark is, in fact, the nasium. And now I'll be a little bit bold here. I'm going to turn on the voice recognition. So the system is listening to my voice, and if I see a few keywords, it'll perform a step. This way, you as the operator can focus on the subject, get the pointer to the right spot, and you don't need to interact with the computer directly using a mouse. So one method is to use voice recognition. The second method is to use the Apple remote, which is also included with the system. So I'll just say a few keywords, and you'll see the reaction. Next. Tip of nose. So when I said that word, it went to the next target. Previous. Nasium. So it's also verbally telling me where to go, so I don't need to actually look at the screen, provided that I'm aware of what these points are. Sample. Simple. Sample. For some reason, it doesn't work too well with my Canadian accent. Simple. So I'll go to the backup, and I'll click on the button. Tip of nose. Sample. All right. Well, some days it doesn't work well. There's actually a lot of echo in my office, and that's probably from it off. Left ear. So, for example, there, if I hadn't been holding it precisely, if I felt that I was too jittery, I can previous. Previous. I can go to the previous point. Tip of nose. And resample. Simple. But again, it's not cooperative. Left ear. So I'm going to go back to this left ear. Right ear. All right, so if you look in the bottom here, we can see these two green or red lights. These are telling us that the pointer and subject tracker are visible. So if in fact, I obscure the spheres of the pointer, it tells us it's out of the view. So I'm just going to slide to the left here because the pointer it's sticking out just outside of the camera's field of view. So I'm just going to move here for a moment. Sample. And of course, I'm really optimist. I was hoping I could get the voice recognition to work. There we go. And let's go to the next step. And the next step now is a verification step. So now I can move the pointer over my head, touch the scalp, and the system will tell me where the pointer is. 
Now we focus our attention to, well, first of all, the cursor location on the scalp here. And on the 3D view, we can see that in a general sense, it looks like it agrees quite well, right? Now, more precisely, if we look here, the crosshair distance between, well, the crosshair, the cursor, and the skin is defined by the 3D reconstruction that's displayed here. Now, anything below three millimeters, we consider to be an excellent registration. And we'll show this number in green. Anything between three and five millimeters, we show in, in yellow, which means you can probably do better, but you might choose to be enough. You might choose that it's good enough for your purposes. And if it's higher than five millimeters, we show it in red. So we don't actually prevent you from going to the next step. We simply give you the information that you need to make a decision as to whether or not the precision of this registration is adequate. So it's best to go over different locations of the head and get an idea of how it works. So we have a good registration in this case. Now, if the registration hadn't been good, we can always go back to the previous step and resample all the landmarks. So if we go back now to the next step, now this step we're going to skip, this is an electro step. So the version of BrainSight on my computer is configured to um, communicate with the Neuroprax EEG system, which is TMS and TBCS compatible. And had the Neuroprax been here and on a network and ready to do the experiment, BrainSight would have detected it on the network and we would be able to query information from the Neuroprax. Most importantly, I would be able to tell or ask the Neuroprax for a list of all the electrodes of the montage that you're using. It would populate it here in this list, and then we can use the pointer to digitize the electrode locations. The idea here is that we can then acquire the EG data in real time, just as we do with our own EMG, and correlate the position of the electrode in space, as, as localized on the head, to the EG data. So the EG data would then be mapped back to the appropriate MRI location. This information can also be exported for use in BISA or some other uh, popular EEG software to do three-dimensional reconstruction based on the location of the electrodes. In this case, we'll just go to the next step, which is the real step. So now, this is a step to actually position the coil. Now, as with all the other steps, we can change the layout of brain site. So I can say, give me one big image and you know, two smaller, three smaller ones on the right. I can change what I want to see in any of these views. So I can really just tailor it to exactly how I want to use it. Now if you're using a Maxim 200 or a Maxim Bystim and you have it connected to our BrainSight trolley via the serial port, I will be able to click on the scan button and it would find the Maxim stimulator and display the stimulator's um, current intensity. So again, when you fire the coil, BrainSight can record a bunch of information. It can record the position and orientation of the coil. If it's talking to the stimulator, it'll query the stimulator for the current power setting. So that gets tagged on to the position information as well. If we're acquiring EMG, it would tag that, that, that stimulation with EMG as well as the EEG data. The way we, we configure some of that is through this trigger options window. So we can enable a trigger channel. So you can run a TTL or a BNC cable from the back of a TMS stimulator to the back of our trolley so that every time the TMS pole is fired, a signal pulse is sent to BrainSight, and that will tell BrainSight to automatically record the coil's position and orientation, as well as the EMG, EEG, or any other information that we're scanning for. We have two channels, in fact, so we can be monitoring two TMS coils simultaneously. Now, if I had the EMG plugged in, I would be able to simply turn on the channel and tell it the baseline and the trial duration. And I'll leave it on, so we won't actually have an EMG, but we'll have at least some sort of, uh, we'll get a baseline. In fact, we won't because I don't have a TMS coil, so it won't be triggering. We'll be triggering this manually. So, once we set up our hardware, here we have a list of our targets, right? So I can turn a target on or off. I can turn the grid on or off. I can select an individual grid node or a target that I want to hit. I can tell the system now to have the coil driving the system. So now that I bring the coil up, I can move the coil over my head. The bottom right is our little bullseye display, and this display basically steers us to the target. Now since the target is a trajectory, we display a few pieces of information in the bullseye. The circle represents the scalp entry point. So the idea is I want to move the coil, not worrying about orientation yet, so that we are over the correct location of the scalp. The dot represents the target in the cortex. So 
So now by changing the angle of the coil, I can change where the coil is pointing, and I can make sure then that we're pointing exactly to our target. Now we also have this little tab on the top here. This tab represents the twist of the coil. So that allows us then to get the correct position on the scalp, aiming it to the correct target in the brain with the correct twist angle as well. And as you can see here, we're showing all this information in real time. Okay. Now, I can also show in these 2D views the angle of the coil. So if I, as I rock the coil back and forth, in fact, you can see how this vector is actually the coil pointing into the head. And as I rock the coil, see how that changes this display. So again, we can make sure that we've picked a reasonable trajectory to get to our target. And of course, we can see it in the 3D view as well. So, in fact, at this point, we'd be ready to stimulate. So you would fire the coil. And if you fire the coil, it will record a sample. Now, I've clicked the button to do that manually. But, of course, if you have the cabling set up, every time you fire the coil, this sample will be created automatically. Now, I can look at this sample here. And as you can see, it's a little shape being displayed. It's hanging above the cortex because, in fact, now it's on the scalp. Right? So, in fact, if I go to the inspector, actually, sorry, not the inspector, if I go to this customize option, I can go to the reconstructors tab of the inspector, I'm sorry, the, the 3D customize, and add the skin surface. So now I can see that the coil was on the scalp when I fired it. Right? Now I can also maybe either create a display where I can show the brain on the scalp at the same time using the crop box or just change this to a piece up here bring the skin back I can bring the inspector tool here and select the ROI so I could bring back for example either the overlay so if I go back to the fMRI data The idea here is that you have lots of options on how to display the information to make sure you can optimize it to give you the information that you need at the time of the stimulation. So I brought back, for example, the fMRI. I could also have turned the skin to some sort of translucent color and had that floating over. In general, these things become a bit busy, so you don't necessarily want to do that. But um, you can, of course, for the, the journal uh, figures. So I can move the code back in until I want and see where I am with respect to that sample or the target. Now if I select the grid node over on this side, so we can over here now, and I can now set up my first target. I can again make sure my trajectory is reasonable. Tracking thing here. There we go. And I would fire the coil. Next. Now, if I turn the voice recognition data back on, <laughs> since I'm always, always an optimist. Next. Previous. Well, all right. There's much too much echo in my new office. If you moved into last week, so I don't have any, um, I don't have much furniture in here yet, so as you can hear in the voice, it's very echoey, and that's throwing off the voice recognition. But if I had the remote, I could simply select it and that would go to the next target. And we simply can then just do the grid this way. Right? So you can go from one to the next to the next to the next and perform a grid, uh, a grid search. And if you do a grid search with the EMG, we can then use that information to do um, some motor mapping, which we'll show in the next video. In fact, I think at this point, this is the end of the TMS session. Um, so basically, we performed a registration of my head to the images. We then track a TMS coil, put it over the correct target, and fire the coil. So that'll be the end of this, uh, this part of the demonstration.